folks! Welcome back to another video. I hope everyone's doing okay at home. Today, I'll be talking a little about your GDC and your data booklet. I don't, I don't have my old. Now, the GDC and the Formula Booklet are two very important resources that are given to you in the exam. Well, it's not going to be considered an important resource if you don't know how to use it. So in this video, I'm going to attempt to use my own experience as well as the tips from this book, which you should get, by the way. There's a link in the description that you can go click and get it. It's a really useful book. I wish I had this when I was at IB. I hope this will really help you just squeeze all the marks you can from these two very 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 important resources. First of all, I'll start with your GDC. Know your error messages. In the exam, if any sort of error message comes up, you need to know what to do in that situation and how you can fix it. Second thing, check whether the question wants you to answer in radians or degrees. Even if you did all your math correctly, if you don't write your answer in either radians or degrees, whatever the question wants you to do, it, you won't get the full marks and sometimes that full math really, really matters. An exam tip that my math teacher did share with us is that in paper two, they give you the GDC, so don't be afraid to use it. Because of paper one, we're sort of conditioned to use our mental calculations to do a lot of work. We think it's faster, but it's not. Don't be afraid to use it. Sometimes there are integration questions that are worth two or three marks that you can solve immediately by using your GDC. Don't waste time. In paper 2, you have no time. Use your GDC! Next, just by changing the endpoints of a graph, it might change the way the graph looks very, very drastically. So it's important that you read the question, you make sure that your endpoints are correct before you sketch any graphs or attempt to answer any question. I don't think this needs to be said, but just in case it does, use the same calculator you use in class and in practice as your exam. Don't buy a whole new calculator just to I don't know, have a new cool calculator for an exam. Use the same one, you practice with it. So you should use the same instruments. Please charge your GECs before your exams because if it's a paper tool or a physics or a chemistry when you need a calculator and you have no calculator, you're gonna be in big trouble. Charge your GECs for crying out loud, please. Because you will be doing that. When you're writing your answers, make sure not to use the calculator notation, but instead use the mathematical notation that is taught to you in class. That will be classified as a proper answer and you won't get the full marks for it. When using a GDC to solve any of the problems in an exam, write the mathematical setup as shown in your calculator as your quote unquote working. And in the exam, because they want you to round to three significant figures, use the squiggly equals to show there is uncertainty. And there should be in many of the answers, unless you're asked to give the exact figures, like in paper one. Other than that, there are also many websites and YouTube videos out there that go into more topic-specific ways that you can maximize your GDC. There are many, many videos on this. Do let me know if you want this to be summarized, but I will still link them in the description so you can go check them out if you want to. And one last thing is, bring your GDC, scientific calculators, anything that you're going to bring into the exam to class. Every time you have class, bring it and use it. Then you get practice, your brain gets used to using it when solving questions. It will bring you a little comfort on the day of the exam. Now I'm going to talk about your formula booklets. It is very, very, very important to know your formula booklets from front to back, from back to front. You need to know where your certain formulas are and where to find them as quickly as possible. To achieve that, all you need to do is in class, when you're doing practice, when you're doing passive papers, use your formula booklet. By doing that, you save time in the exam. And in the exam, every single minute counts. This is one thing that I didn't do throughout my two years, but I wish I did, is that when you learn new formula from even the very, very beginning, sort them into three groups. Available in the formula booklet, derivable, 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 derivable from the formula booklet. And number three, not in the formula booklet. If you want, there's also a fourth category where it's optional. These are formulas that will help you in the exam. You won't be doomed if you don't know these formula. These formula are ones that will help you save time. So for instance, like Don't worry too much about these. 
in the physics exams, they might attempt to trick you by using different notation. So you have to be very, very aware of not only the formulas, but the concepts that are attached to those formulas so you don't get tricked by the question. Online, there are annotated formula booklets where you can use that to help you revise. Next to each formula, they will give you the explanation, the concept attached to it and all that, and that would help you during you know, your practices in class or even during your own revision. If the notes you see in the annotated data booklets don't make sense to you, make your own. In class, whenever you learn a new formula, just write notes, scribble notes next to your formula in the data booklet. Throughout our course, our physics teacher did this thing which was very helpful and useful to us when it came to understanding concepts and the formula booklet. He would teach us one formula and give us practice questions of all the different ways this formula can be used in questions. Through that, we were able to see the different ways that the IB tries to trick us in our exams and how it may try to connect different concepts together to try and confuse you in the exam. Again, same with the GDC, bring your formula booklets to class. It's very, very important that you have them with you during practice, during revisions. It's not something that you only use for your exam. Thank you all so much for watching. See y'all next time.